It's the Yankees and the Red Sox opening up the playoffs tomorrow in the American League wildcard game. And uh, the, the, the Red Sox are hosting the Yankees because they held the season series against them 10 to 9. But it's amazing to me how often and as and as much as baseball and the schedule just seems kind of incessant at times and there are 162 games and you're just kind of laboring through and and it's hard to believe that you that we've reached this point where we're finally at the end of the regular season and so often these regular season finishes and the post seasons and which teams get in it all comes down to the final game of the regular season to the 162 162nd game of an MLB season. You would think that the teams would kind of shake out way before then, not this year. Both divisions, both conferences, it came down to the final to the final day. The Dodgers and the Giants had an historic race for the NL West. Crazy that that the Dodgers are a wild card team given they have 100 and six wins. It's absolutely preposterous. And that that race was incredible. And now you switch to the Yankees and the Red Sox, and it required Aaron Judge hitting a walk-off home run against the Rays to clinch a spot for the Yankees. And it, and it required Rafael Devers for the Red Sox to hit a two-run homer over the Nationals on the road to clinch a spot for the Red Sox in the postseason. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yet, with that being said, there couldn't be any better wild card matchup than the Yankees and the Red Sox. I looked this up. The Yankees and the Red Sox have played 2,302 times. It's, it's arguably the greatest rivalry in baseball. It's one of the fiercest rivalries in American sports, the Yankees and the Red Sox. Boston, New York, just a couple hour drive difference. A rivalry that dates back over 120 years. There have been 23 postseason postseason meetings between the Yankees and the Red Sox. The Yankees lead 12 to 11 all time. In fact, they've met in the ALCS three times, with the Yankees taking two of three. And there have been some just historic, legendary moments: 1999 and then 2003. Of course, Aaron Boom Boone hitting a walk off home run in extra innings in Game Seven to send the Yankees to the World Series. They ended up winning the World Series that season. They've got 27 World Series. The, the Red Sox have nine. But following the 2003 ALCS, in which the Yankees prevailed in seven, you fast forward to 2004, in which, again, it's the Yankees and the Red Sox. And this time, the Yankees lead 3 nothing, and the Red Sox rallied back to come back from three games down. They were the first team in MLB history to ever come back from 3-0, from a 3-0 deficit to win the ALCS, to advance to the World Series, to win the World Series that season. And you've got tremendous moments. Game four, it's the Dave Roberts steal against Mariano Rivera. And then you've got the legend of David Ortiz, Big Poppy hitting the, the walk-off home run in the 12th inning to propel the Red Sox. It's ultimately catapulting them to win that series. You got Kurt Schilling, who in game six is bleeding out of his sock because he's got some like recently surgical repaired, surgically repaired ankle. In game six, he's going out for the Red Sox. And it, it was a legendary type of type of matchup. They met once recently in the ALDS in 2018. The Red Sox won that. In in four games, they won three one. In fact, they won sixteen to one at at Yankee Stadium. They ultimately went on to win the World Series that year over the Dodgers in twenty eighteen. Like th this is this is one of the best rivalries I in sports. It, it truly is, but it's actually kind of been one sided over the last two decades because the the Red Sox have won four wor World Series since two thousand and four. The Yankees haven't won a World Series since two thousand. And three, that's how long it's been. The Red Sox just won in 2018. And of course, you've got the 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 curse of Bambino and 1919 Henry, Henry Frazee, the owner of the Red Sox, notoriously this day will live in infamy. He sold Babe Ruth, Babe, uh, Babe Ruth to the Yankees. We obviously know what type of career Babe Ruth ended up having. 
for New York, even though he was a product of the Red Sox. There's just so much history that exists between these two teams. And again, the Yankees were 9-10 and 10 overall this year against the Red Sox, which is why they're having to play at Fenway tomorrow. But I'll say this, you know, baseball is one of the few sports where it's it's quite apparent how streaky teams are. Everyone says, oh, it's it's important to get to get hot at the right time. But baseball, I'd argue that it's that it's even more important because you're playing every day. So you literally have to have such short memory. If you end up winning and and finding that hot streak for four straight days, that can lead to four straight wins. Football, you play once a week. Basketball, maybe you play twice in a four-day span in the postseason. Baseball, you play every day. So the teams that are playing their best baseball at the right time, that are the hottest, can ultimately win. It doesn't always come down to who's the best team in baseball, but who's playing the best baseball, who's the hottest team at the right time. We saw the Washington Nationals in 2019. They were a wild card team. They ended up winning the World Series. They weren't the best team all season, but they had the best run at the right time of the year. They struck gold at the right time of the year. And so you, when I think about, when I look at the Red Sox and the Yankees, ultimately, I think the Yankees are going to pull this one out because they've been the better team as of late. The Yankees lost the first six games, lost the first two series to the Red Sox in the first half of the season. In fact, through the first 13 games, they dropped 10 of them. They were 3-10. and 10. The Red Sox had a 10-3 and three lead, series lead, over the Yankees through the first 13 games. But if you look at the second half of the season, it's been dominated by the Yankees. They've won the last two straight series. They've won the last six straight games. They've won by an average of 2.8 runs. In fact, they've been averaging scoring over five runs per game. This Yankees offense has woken up. Their bats have woken up. And the problem that I have right now with, with the Red Sox, it's not that one team has a decisive advantage as far as momentum is concerned. The Yankees went 14 and 7 over their last 21. The Red Sox went 13 and 8 over the last 21. So fairly comparable in that department, but I have some questions about the pitching for the Red Sox. Chris Sale just pitched in this in this regular season finale. He's kind of working his way back into into shape. I like Nathan uh, Ivaldi. He's a, he's a really good starting pitcher. I don't really trust the bullpen, though, for the Red Sox. They haven't been great this year. They've been fine, but they haven't really been extremely well. And in the postseason, pitching is what ultimately wins. I love Rafael Devers. He's been tremendous this year. Xander Bogarts, Renfro, and and Kike Hernandez, and, and Verdugo. And you have the big bat of Kyle Schwarber. But now we have J.D. Martinez, who could be out with an ankle injury. He's one of their best offensive hitters. In fact, he was an AL MVP just a couple years ago in 2018. So I have some question marks there. And when I look at the Yankees, Garrett Cole's probably going to take the mound. I like the advantage that he has over Eovaldi. I think that the offense for the Yankees has been the most consistent that it's been in quite some time. Aaron Judge is starting to find his rhythm at the right time. Giancarlo Stanton has had the best stretch of his career with the Yankees the last several months. Nine home runs in August, 10 home runs in September. He's been finding his his sweet spot in the bat. DJ LeMahieu, he might, I'm not sure if he's going to be on on the IL or if he'll be available, but Urshel has been playing well. Sanchez has been playing well. This is a really, really good Yankees team that, quite frankly, I would argue has come up kind of short the last several years. Now, you can argue they should have reached the World Series in 2017 when the Astros ultimately kind of cheated their way past them to winning. But regardless, the Dodgers have been able to get back to the World Series. The Yankees haven't. This this could be the year that they do it. And I just think that they're kind of finding their stride at the right time. Even though they're playing on the road at Fenway, it'll be a hostile environment, no doubt. I just kind of like the Yankees a little bit. I I really do. And again, um, both of these teams are kind of similar as far as the momentum that they have entering this contest. But I just think that the Yankees have the advantage in the pitching. I think that their bats this postseason 
might be a little bit more consistent. I just trust that John Carlos Stanton's going to play a little bit better. And if he does, he's a major, major problem for the Red Sox. I think he'll be close, but I think it's kind of one of these four, three, five, three Yankee wins at Fenway is what I is what I see.